So, Shar, why are we meeting? Where are we meeting and why? Well, from the looks of it, uh, I feel as though we're in Belgium again for <laughs> at, at least the 22nd uh, edition of DevOps. And yeah. uh, right now, it looks like uh, the build out has become yeah. uh, and it started and yeah. it's looking pretty good. And there seems to be a buzz in the hallways. Yeah, yeah. Well, there were a lot of people already. At, I think like a thousand at least, I guess, today. Today, for the a deep thousand. dives. That's yeah, right. That was... I, I think there's going to be over 3,000 uh, attendees. Yeah, here. probably. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, what gave Belgium away was the waffles or the chocolate? I think it's a combination of both, <laughs> okay, for good. sure. Yeah. Um, right, so we, yeah, we're here at DevOps, and why, what, what brings us all back here every year? I mean, you, you make a really effort to be at these events, and Absolutely. we all come out, like, there's not just, not just DevRel, you can talk to, like, real-life people here, uh, like, you know, Brian Getz is here, and Angelos Bebudis, and Gavin Beer, and we're going to talk to all of those throughout the week. But, uh, yeah, why, why are we here? Well, you, you named some fantastic uh, experts in the Java community, and like any conference, any meetup, any visit, it's important to learn about Java, which is great. Great skill set yeah. to have, right? It's going to bootstrap your career for many years to come. Yeah. But the connections we make and formulate in the community gives us a reason to be part of this great technology. And so DevOps is one of the greatest uh, examples yeah. that bring developers together so we can connect, we yeah. can communicate, we can collaborate together to, yeah. to, to push our careers forward. Yeah, right. Like it's really like it, like especially the open source space makes it kind of obvious, but also these places, how much just serendipity happens, like just people meeting and just having good ideas together. I think they call that the hallway track. The hallway, the track, hallway track. Right. So we try to bring a little bit of the hallway track to you folks out there because you know apparently you're not here because if you were here then don't be on YouTube. Um, but if you're here at DevOps, uh, sorry, if you're not here at DevOps uh, and you want to you know ask these folks that I mentioned earlier a few other ones uh, questions. You could meet them in the hallway if you worry, but if you're not, you can ask them here on YouTube. Uh, there's a schedule down in the description. You see who we'll have on. Um, and so we're trying to bring a little bit of that energy out to you. And uh, talking about talks, you're going to give one, I think, it's like a birds of a feather session later today. Right. But you'll have a guest on. I do. So, and, you know, DevOps is immersed in a lot of technical sessions, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but we also want to talk about the importance of community, going back to how can we all help each other yeah. sustain this great, uh, career mm -hmm. for many years to come. And yeah. so we have a BOF scheduled for tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow. Uh, just talking about the impact of the Java ecosystem on our careers and on our aspirations. I have a, a special guest, Tom Cools yeah. from Belgium. Okay. He's going to be part of that, that BOF. And yeah. we're going to go and explore a little bit about his personal experiences as far as him being in the Java community okay. and what that's done for him in terms of translating into career opportunities, oh. but also being able to give him a platform to bring more developers together yeah. and increase the size of our community. Can you give a little bit more specifics that maybe can give us a little bit of a preview? Sure. Because like, I think uh, like, what it really, it's like everybody who's part of the Java community feels that to some degree, like what the things you just described. But I think it's also really cool to see like some specific case like him where it really shows, like in practice, how this is more than just talk. Like it really has a material impact on people's lives. Right. So, as many people know, we have hundreds of Java user groups around the world. I think yeah. we're almost at a little over 380. Okay. Java user groups, and that's a lot. That I feel like half of them are in Germany, though. I gotta admit, like there's like you cannot throw a stone in Germany without meeting a well, duck. Well, that just means there's a strong <laughs> heartbeat of Java in Germany, which is yeah, great yeah. to see. Yeah. But we have other Java user groups yeah, in Brazil, yeah. in the U.S., and in Asia. And these user groups are a great place to meet peers of like minds. Yeah. So you can not just share your ideas and your innovation, but it's also important to surface your fears, your anxieties, your doubts, yeah. and know that you're not the only one. And what Tom has done, as we see with history, like things move on. And so mm -hmm. as we, as community managers, move from one role to the next, it's important we hand that baton off to someone behind us who wants to carry that momentum yeah. forward. And what Tom has done is taken over the responsibility of organizing the Belgium Java user group. And oh. so it's a great investment. It shows his dedication to yeah. not just the, uh, the technology, but he wants to ensure that that vibrancy that was there, mm. not just continues forward, but grows in amplification. Yeah. And we all have our callings. And so as developers, we can find unique ways to yeah. contribute back, not just yeah. from a technical uh, dimension. Yeah, I like, I like what you said about also the negative aspects like anxiety. There's like, you know, there's in development, there's often like crunch times. And now we kind of, for the first time, I think in our 
the history of our career, we might be the ones getting replaced. So uh, that hits, you know, like the AI revolution made probably uh, I, make, I was, make some people worry. I was hoping you wouldn't say AI, but you said it anyway. anyway right. I'm sorry, like I'd have to put like some money in the, in in the, the, jar. In the swear jar. That's right. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think like, that's, that's a good point, right? It's not just about technology. It's also not just about, you know, all the cool things we do together as a group. It's also kind of sharing what maybe is, is distressing or, or, or like stressful in our lives. And I think that's also good that these communities are there and that you can always at these conferences, but also at Java Euros groups, see talks that are not just technical, but dealing with organizational issues, dealing or, with crunch or, time. Or with, with career pressure. issues, or yeah. uh, how do I share something that's meaningful to me? Is it just unique to me or are there other people who are interested? So it's a great yeah. platform to surface that and to yeah. sort of do a litmus test in terms of, is this something of value that other people not just want to learn about, but participate in? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And which, by the way, there's so many other dimensions besides Java user groups where the community can participate. Yeah, I mean, like specifically during COVID to get the other word out there, uh, we didn't love that remote. Swear right? jar. Yeah, and uh, and so I mean, these things are struggle, uh, challenging when you do them remote, but they're still valuable, right? There's still many people in places in the world where there's no jug close by, there's no conference that maybe they can afford, um, and so it's really good to have some of these things. Like these talks will all be online soon after. Some conferences to straight up live stream their main stages, uh, and so I think there's Java user groups everywhere, prep on every continent except Antarctica. So I right. think that's a stretch goal for us. Yeah, good. Wait, what the Antarctica part? Yes. <laughs> I can take no promises though. Um, okay. By the way, people have questions in chat. I will occasionally look there. No. Whoa. Like there's stairs down here. Yes. Right? Like yeah. Um, so like I said, you know, participation matters in different yeah. ways. It's not just user groups. There's many ways yeah. that we as developers can contribute to Java, not just from going to a user group or yeah. going to a conference. Yeah, you had an example there, right? Where the community uh, provided, did something as a whole that really changes how Java, where Java is going. Right, so uh, there's many examples we can give. The, the easiest place where developers can participate with what, what I call low friction and low barrier yeah. is in the OpenJDK project itself. Just, yeah. just by following the mail list keeps you attuned to what direction Yeah. Java is moving forward. Oh, that's a big, the word just is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. The mailing lists are, there's like, there's so many great conversations going on there and there's like a lot and there's also like very detailed things. So for those is already a big ask, but it's great that it's there, that it's, that it's public and that people can find the one thing that interests them and just follow that one. Or just, for that again, matter, I know I said it too. <laughs> that's right. Or, or, you know, you might see a, 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 an area of Java that might need some fixing or revision and we've had people contribute back into OpenJDK with, yeah. with their discovery of things that need a bit more refinement. Yeah. But another great example is uh, early access builds, right? So yeah. it gives, some people may not think that you're participating by downloading the EA build and testing it in your production environment to see what it does, but that in itself is participation. Yeah, definitely. Because it not, does it, not only does it prepare you for the next release of Java, it gives you a chance to give feedback in terms of yeah. what additional refinement we need to do before we move to another general yeah. availability. So that's really hard to overstate the importance there. If you have the, the chance and the bandwidth to, for example, run your nightly builds against an um, EA build, and if then something breaks unexpectedly, look at your code, look at your dependencies, maybe there's a bug there, maybe there's a bug in the JDK. I, I found more recently that was really accidental. I found like a bug in, in pattern matching, and it's, it's going to be fixed in 20, uh, 2301. So, just like just trying these things out uh, is immensely helpful uh, to, to give feedback on, yeah. Definitely. Oh, I mean, we just had this ex experience with Java 22 uh, in the March release of Java. Yeah. You know, we released string templates. I mean, as right? a preview, yeah. As, preview, as a preview, yeah. yeah. As a preview, important point yeah, that is a preview, reason. right? And so from a design standpoint, string templates delivered on the promise of what we intended, but based on end user feedback, you know, there's yeah. some refinement we need to do with the syntax. Yeah. So yeah. what did we do in Java 23? We pulled it out. And it doesn't mean it's not going to come back. It yeah. means we still have work to do to ensure it meets the needs of the end user. Yeah. So at some point in the future, we want to look to reintroduce the yeah. promise of string, string templates in a downstream version of Java. Yeah, uh, that one stung a bit though. So I got to agree, not only did I like the proposal, I already wrote like a bunch of code against it, which you know, I, that's kind of my job, but, but also do. I would have, yeah, but I also would have done it if it were not my job. Like that's just the kind of person I am. And then when it changed, I was like, oh damn, I have to go back and like rip them off. But it's just what happens. But the, you know, that's the beauty of this amazing journey we are on by releasing Java every six months versus the previous promise yes. of every two or every three years. Because in that former model, yeah. when we released Java, once it became part of the standard, it becomes very challenging to insert 
meaningful changes. Yeah. And so incrementally with six months releases, what we can do is get feedback sooner and quicker, implement them so it meets the user needs as broadly as possible. Yeah. So that's a great question, Chad. Uh, can you name a few, I guess, like a few social media accounts or something to follow to keep up to date? Oh, because wow. if you don't want to read all the mailing lists, which that's, that's a perfectly reasonable decision. Um, although, like, I don't want to overstate this. If you can find a uh, project that interests you and follow that one mailing list, that can be incredibly enriching. Don't start by, I'm going to read all the mailing lists. Start by, this one topic interests me and start there. But, you know, if, if people want to do a broader and maybe less deep view, what would what, they do? So uh, that's a great question because with a community size of over 10 million developers, yeah. we all have our preferences in terms of how to stay connected. Yeah. And so that means there's multiple modalities that we have to ensure are uh, supported and invested in. Yeah. Um, I think a great way is to follow you on social. Uh, <laughs> so he, I'm Nipa FX yeah, everywhere. <laughs> so he didn't pay me to say that, but it's true because I'll pay later. There, <laughs> we here on the DevRel team have unique uh, skill sets uh, and voices that we want to share and bring yeah. that personality forward. And I know there might be some uh, reduce, reduced volume on Twitter. I'm going to keep calling it Twitter. Yeah, same. All right. Same. Um, but I would uh, recommend that everyone follows at least at Java yes. on Twitter, because that's our master social account to talk about the breadth of Java. Yeah. But within at Java, we also have lists embedded. So you can follow all of the developers on okay. the Java platform group who yeah. have a social account. So they can, so you can read and hear what they're expressing yeah. about their dimensions and their contributions on Java. So Nikolai's in that list. I'm on that list. Yeah. All of the folks on DevRel are on that list. But we also have engineers that participate. Yeah. Now that's from a social standpoint. Yeah. I think. What so, if Twitter isn't isn't somebody's cup of tea? So you which, know, ha, and, and which happens okay. increasingly. It, it's in happening the increasingly. Time, yeah. um, a great way to meet uh, in the moment is definitely find out. Wow. They really are literally yeah, building really out yeah, exactly. DevOps it's happening as we're right standing now. here, right? <laughs> so um, one of the great things you can do is, uh, as we talked about earlier, join a local Java user group. Yeah. Now, if you don't know if there is a local Java user group near you, yep. I please direct your browser attention to dev.java. Yeah. So we have our almighty Billy in the chat, so maybe yes. you can just type that out there. Yeah, dev.java, there's a link to the jugs there, so that's a great way to find what's close by. That's right. Um, and there's also a virtual jug. So uh, the, the V jug is meant to break uh, border barriers. And so the virtual Java user group, uh, which is now being stewarded by a group of individuals in the UK, is bringing together developers who may not physically have a user group close to them. So join the V jug, and so you get yeah. all, your, all, all your information virtually and online. Yeah. Um, Another great resource, inside.java. Yeah, I was going to say right? that, yeah. So, so if you're above 40 and you still know what an RSS feed is, inside.java has a great one. It collects all the all the things, like all the most interesting mails on the main list, new JPS files. All the blogs, all right. the writings, all the audio, all the video content that all of our engineers yeah. are producing. And it aggregates that with, in a taggable fashion. So if you want to follow Brian Getz, or you want to follow Ron Pressler, or you want to follow Nikolai Parlov. So bring this up. That's OK. Well, you're, that, see, you're important to me, and that's why I follow you. Um, or if you want to follow specific technical topics, yeah, yeah. it's all searchable by your area of interest. Yeah, and that's so definitely. important. But I got to say, going back to the learning part, we can never forget that we have to continue to learn and upskill our Java expertise. Yeah. That's what keeps us relevant. Uh, my father has a great quote, which is, you know less than you know. And I was sitting there as a child thinking, what does he mean by yeah. you know less than you know? It's like every day is an opportunity to realize you still have something yeah. new to learn. Yeah. And we do. And one of our greatest assets, as you know, is our official YouTube channel. Yes. So youtube.com slash Java. Yeah. That's where so the have, thing you're watching right, watching now, right now. Yeah. Right. So that's where we have our collection of technical screencasts, long form, short form. We have. Uh, uh, dev advocates that have their own specific channel and program, yep. things like Sip of Java, things like Jep Cafe, things yep. like the Inside Java newscast that you produce. It's fantastic. Yeah. So um, I got a comment. This is why I love the Java community. There's always many people to help and to learn from. Yeah. So we just talked very much about, since we are working for Oracle's Java platform group, and then our main focus is like, what's OpenJDK doing? What are the people in our vicinity doing? But of course, the Java community is much wider than that. And while we don't have a list of all the other folks to follow, um, uh -huh. you will find them that you do. do don't yes, we? we do. You do. Nice. So there's a couple of ways people can learn about all of the other luminaries and experts yeah. beyond Tell just us. the Java team at Oracle. So 
again, going back to Twitter, <laughs> if you follow at Java, we also have a list of all of the Java user groups that have a social handle. So you okay. can pick the user group you want to follow socially. We also have a link uh, and built out a list of all of the Java champions. All right. Yes. So if you go to that list, you'll see all of the luminaries that are part of the Java champions program yeah. and follow them individually as well. Yeah. But wait, there's, there's more. more. <laughs> right? You saw that coming. Yeah, yeah. So, I, know, uh, I know the uh, American sales television stuff. Yeah. But wait, okay, but yeah. wait, there's more. So also going back to dev.java, yeah. we have the ability to take community contributions and publish that as well. All right, so yeah, through uh, GitHub, we have a pull request. We have various topics that we're looking for. You can contribute your content. Mind you, it's going to go through some scrutiny in terms of yes. ensuring it meets our quality criteria. I've, I've, I've been known not to be the, not to be like, I'm not waving things through in a review is what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's important that- Oxford the, comma. Anyway, we, sorry. We, we, <laughs> you have to bring that up. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it, it allows us to then showcase the technical voice beyond just the Java team. And we have yeah. uh, luminaries that many people know, like Venkat Subramanium and Kai Horseman and yeah. Gene Boyarsky. Uh, Heinz Kibbutz, all of these individuals have contributed their technical content, which are now publishing yeah. on dev.java. And we want the community to contribute to that so we can expand that catalog of content that goes beyond our team. Yeah. So before closing this out, I want to get back to something you said earlier, because I just reminded me of something that happened actually today. You said that one part to contribute is to, uh, to just play with the new things and report what's working and what's not. The reporting part is kind of important too, right? Like it's good if you play with it, but if you find something that works and something that doesn't, like it's really, that feedback is what works. Also, you know, if it does work, that's also good. Just like saying, okay, so I tried all this, seems to work fine for me is also important. That's validating feedback, feedback for us. Yeah. Uh, so what happened earlier today is I talked, and I had to give a talk about, you know, new stuff in Java, and one of them is a simplified main, and now you can have, uh, as a preview feature, you don't have to write a system out print line anymore, which is kind of like, that made us the butt of a lot of jokes. So now you can just type print line, which is kind of nice. So I say that, and then uh, there was a long talk, so there was a break in the middle. Guy comes down and says, so I tried this in JSON, it doesn't work. I'm like, hey, it doesn't? That's kind of weird, shouldn't it? So we tried it out. We opened, like, in the break, we just opened up JShell, we experimented a bit, and it turns out, so the class IO is present, IO print line works, but just print line doesn't work. I go back to the JPG Slack, and I'm like, this seems fishy, is it intentional? Oh, no, it's not intentional, actually. It's a bug. So now we got a bug report. Uh, so it took like... Live. Live, here, yeah. Discovered. It took like 60 minutes for me, you know, talking about a feature, somebody trying it out. We, both of us realizing, see, it doesn't seem to work as extended. The expert checking in, oh, yeah, no, that does not work as intended, and now it's going to be fixed soonish, I guess. So, yeah, that's really, like, this is a really and, small, and like, quick feedback loop. But, that, but that's why it's so important that we have these yeah. social connections, because we can take that input immediately back into the mothership. Yeah, exactly. Right? And evaluate, is yeah. this something that needs uh, adjusting or modifying? Yeah. Okay, I want to uh, get this to a close. Let me see. I want to, I need to press a button here somewhere for something to, important to happen. Let's see. I think it should be this button. Okay, so... Uh, we're gonna have more lessons for the rest of the week. We're gonna have, uh, I don't wanna make myself a liar now, I think like seven actual live streams more. And then we're gonna have a recorded uh, talk uh, conversation with Brian gets towards the end. He's really hard to pin down, so I'm gonna just have to check him in the hallways and record a video with him. Um, and so the next one is gonna be with Stuart Marks about the future of collections uh, in Europe. That will be tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., but it's 8 a.m. UTC. And you should already be able to see that in your feed now, so you can already get notified for that. And I hope to see you all there. Then, and we're going to uh, go the bridge from the community content, known dive deep into technical content for the rest of the week. Uh, thank you for being here, Shar. Nikolai, thank you for inviting me. Sure, thank you everybody for being here. I hope to see you again tomorrow or the days after. Have a good one. So long. <laughs>